Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness. Mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it? and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about, and sink again, like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the mourning for an only son, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east, 
They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We will trust in God's great mercy. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You blot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O you deceitful tongue. That God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. We will trust in God's great mercy. second reading is from Colossians. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. He has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, 
so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered the village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked him, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen, chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a reason I love the saints. It's because I learn a lot about a life lived out for God, a life that was given out to God. And Christian life is not easy. By faith, these saints have chosen the hardest of journeys, while we often choose the easiest. And the Bible in Matthew chapter 7 talks about the narrow path that's taken by few and the wide highway taken by many. And that's our focus for today. On one hand, the wide highway is described by the Bible in prohibitive words and we find in Proverbs chapter 4 tells us do not enter the path of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil men. We also find the narrow path described in these words in Jeremiah chapter 6. Thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Which goes to tell us how very rebellious we are. We might not actually think we are rebellious, but we may, you may realize that we are more rebellious than we think. One of the earliest church um, greatest preachers, John Chrysostom, he lived in the year 340. He said, the narrow path is unattractive by nature, but becomes easy once we choose to follow it because of, of our hope for the future. And these two paths are exclusive. You cannot be in both because they're running into two different directions. So, it is interesting that the good news is that we can choose right now which one we would like to be on. Is it the narrow path? Doesn't look so nice and all tidy and it may be uncomfortable and bumps, but there might be this shiny, all wonderfully well, you know, it's all smooth, but you don't know that what's at the end. You know, it's kind of like really nice and attractive and so many people choose it. My son told me the other day that uh, if you want to buy something online, you have to watch on the side. It says how many people really loved buying that, you know, because they find that it was very helpful. And then you buy it because they told you that it is a good thing. And so by that logic, you think that we can all choose what other people have chosen, but it doesn't always work that way. Just because other people have chosen that shiny, nice highway, it doesn't mean it's good for us. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it leads to destruction. And here in our old scriptures today, alluded to these paths. 
first the Old Testament prophet Amos. He tells a story in line with living, those living in a way that is opposite to God's way. And he pronounces a terrible judgment to those who trample the needy and ruin the poor for gain. So the New Testament now brings the story of Martha and Mary, who both are with Jesus. But Mary is the only one who is interested in the narrow path. And so uh, Martha is distracted. That's what the Bible tells us. And, but this story of Mary and Martha mimics our own lives in many ways, as you are going to find out. But which path are we on? Think about it. Are you in the narrow path that is uncomfortable, but that leads to life eternal? Or are you in the, you know, large, I'm doing this because other people are doing it, and, but you, we don't know exactly where this is going because it might not be going in, the, in a very nice place. I will make this statement for us today. True believers keep developing a resistance to the attractiveness of the high, the wide highway. And God does not make a secret that he doesn't like the wide highway that leads to destruction. Because imagine we are God's wonderful and perfect workmanship, God's perfect piece of work. Why would he desire our destruction? The truth is, we both have a common enemy that seek const constantly our destruction. He encourages and incites people to just love this wide and shiny highway. You see, if you choose this way, you will gain great things. And you know, you, if you watch the ads today, they will say, you just have to have this pill. All your problems will be passed away. No problem. Is that really the truth? All your wrinkles will be gone. Is that true, really? You know, this, oh, because other people are doing it, let's just all go for it. Because it looks very nice. It seems to look very nice. This is an enemy who will do everything in his power to lure us in it so that using our wounds and our carnal desires and none of us can say that we have never fell for it in fact we fall for it all the time but we must remind each other to go back in repentance to the narrow path that leads to life eternal and Jesus reminded gently Martha about the narrow path. As a matter of fact, what he said was only one thing, only one thing. He did not say that all that Martha was worried about, you know, do, don't you see that I'm working hard here? I, I cooked and I did the dishes and all did by myself. Why can't she come and help me here? You know, and we understand her, right? We understand her. I, I do that. I cook and I wish someone would realize that they live in this home too and they need to come and help. <laughs> we are ma like Martha in this regard and we need Jesus' gentle reminder so that we may not be distracted by household affairs, political affairs, gossip affairs, relationship affairs, you name it. We go into it, don't we? We go into it and with such a, 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 a tension, a passion, we go into it. And remember, these things are not all bad. Don't get me wrong. We all have to do our dishes at some point. But the trouble with Martha was that he had, she had this intense passion when, to view with her work with, and which produced more worldliness in her and she lost her, her cool, she lost her quietness, she lost her peace because she was demanding and she complaining, demanding, and, and she could not see that there was that narrow path of peace, of, of, of God's peace in your heart because she was too much in all these things. Have you watched people who are so much in sports? So much, so much so that there is nothing else left 
or, or so much into politics that there is nothing else, no other life around but that. Lord, have mercy on us. And the narrow path is demanding that we give up, we give up everything. Sin or our own way of looking at things, we give up for Jesus. And many of us will struggle our way with our faith, just like Martha, too busy to notice that we are busy. And Mary is teaching us that when we worship God, God's heart is moved. And Martha is teaching us that when we complain, we show that we are deeply disturbed in our souls. And that's why Jesus is leading Martha gently, gently to the narrow path. You see, when we are in the narrow path, all of our frustrations like Martha's frustrations will blow up in Jesus because Jesus can take it. When we are in that narrow path, then Jesus can come and live in you and you can live in, in Jesus. So the Holy Spirit will guide you gently to choose the narrow path every day and bring you back to the so when even when the attractiveness of the highway is winning very much on us. So will you ask God's grace to help you choose the narrow path? Amen. Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Phoebe, our bishop, Jeff, our rector, Christian, our associate rector, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and sacraments. We pray for all those affected by war and natural disasters, our military personnel, our president, Congress, and judiciary, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor with the Son. Have compassion on Ashley, T.I., Nikki, Brian, Stuart, June, Butch, Dana, Ed, Mary, Kristen, Bill, Bucky, Paul, Jack, Gail, Pam, 
Julie, Sue Ann, Anna, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We pray for all missionaries, for our pastoral care teams, and for those with birthdays this week. Joe, Paulina, Isabella, Ting Ting, Dax, God's Will, and Jennifer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you and all our sins. God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he gave it thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation as bread and as wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrifice, that we may be acceptable to you and being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
That is correct. sacrament our Lord Jesus Christ rules you in Jesus name you are freed from the world the flesh the devil from sin and death in Jesus name we call down upon you the kingdom blessings of shalom peace all the blessings of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit
serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.